All right, so a little disclaimer here. You know, you should take advantage of owning two licenses within ZBrush. I know that's a lot of money, but uh, if you are doing something like this, I don't really see any advantage over it other than wanting to play with ZBrush 3.5. If you really think about it, 3.2 for the Mac is just as powerful, if not more. Um, I, I do like the new brushes in here. These are very nice. I would miss Go Z a little bit. I'm just going to say that. But they do have a nice export feature that allows you to export to Maya. So it's just kind of like Go Z, but a little, little uh, not so lazy. Okay. So there's advantages and disadvantages. I would say just to play around with 3.5, this is a great little workflow. So what I'm going to do is actually close out of ZBrush 3.5 on my PC and show you how I, I set up the PC. Okay, so I'm going to run this virtually just so the screen capturing stays true for both programs. Here, all I do is have to go to Control Panel, and I would set up a user as admin. Okay, now what this user has to have is a username and password. I know often people that have Windows connections set up so you don't have to type a password. Well, in this case, you're going to have to. It, it really does help a lot. So what I made that is a very simple admin admin. There's my username and password. So uh, another thing you should do is probably protect yourself. Uh, you know, make make it a little higher than admin admin. But you know, I'm behind a router, and that router is protected pretty good. I would say also you have to have a gigabit connection. So your PC has to have the gigabit connection okay now you can run this from a Mac laptop wirelessly this little remote desktop connection it runs just as smooth but it's very important you have the backbone attached all right so now you have an admin admin or whatever user you're gonna have but they have to be computer administrator so you can set up a new user if you wanted to by creating a new account that's important now, the next thing is system, and up at the top here, I have remote, and I have to do is allow users to connect to me remotely. So I have to check that box. That's about it. And then select the remote users. Of course, I have admin in here. Okay, so I would have to go in here and connect and check for advanced. And then I could find now, and then I could find all my users, and there's my administrator. I could just hit that and uh, hit OK. With that said and done, I can now connect to my Windows machine. A few more things I have to do on my Mac, though, however. Okay, and that is, here on my Mac, I'm going to have to go to Microsoft's website. I know, I know. It'll be OK. Microsoft.com slash Mac. Hmm. Here, I have uh, downloads somewhere. Downloads. And under downloads, I have Microsoft Remote Desktop. Okay. Here's English. Now I'm not going to install this. We all know as Mac users, this is a very easy process of hitting go and OK and next to just about anything. Okay. When you get it installed, it'll show up in your Go applications. And it'll show up as remote desktop connection. I just clicked and dragged it down here. That's all I did. Okay, on my PC side, I just have to now know my IP address, which is a very simple command. If you run CMD, and then up here I could say IP config slash all. Just like that.
All right. So this gives me my IP address right here. So I'm just going to close this out and disconnect. So here are my remote desktop connection. I just type in that IP address, hit connect, hit OK, connect. And this is where it's going to ask me to log into the machine. So it's admin, admin. And there I'm connected. Now a few things that you should know about remote desktop connection, and I'm going to share with those in the next video because I'm running out of time.